you want to do a little uh, musical intro there, Tashar? <laughs> Okay, that's that's yeah. Well, let's just make it clear right now, in case anyone had any question. You play way better than Corbin. <laughs> How you doing, Tashar? I'm good. I think I'm I'm going nuts because yeah. <laughs> I've gone out of my house in like the past fifteen, sixteen days. And you know, India is under a complete lockdown, which makes a lot of sense. So, <clears throat> so how are you coping with it? Yeah, all? I mean, I don't know. Sorry. How are you coping with it all? I don't know. I I, I stare at the wall like <laughs> half the day. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, I don't I don't have any you know like coping mechanisms. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm listening to a lot of music now. Actually, uh-huh. I mean, th- this is actually very strange. You know, I don't actively sit and listen to music. But uh, this uh, social isolation is kind of, you know, forcing me to, you know, just listen to, you know, a lot more new artists. Yeah. And yeah, I've been doing that. I've been composing a lot of new originals, like, uh, yeah, a lot of them. So it's it's for that, you know, that web series I told you about. So, yeah, yeah that's going on. And, you know, I mean, actually, this is uh, this is what, you know, a composer's lifestyle would be even without the quarantine. Uh-huh. So it's, I mean, now now people around me they've started calling it social isolation, and I'm like, yeah, that's just you know like a regular day for me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't understand you know this uh, special terminology that's come around. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's actually yeah. Kind of I mean, I, I miss I, I I just miss going out. You know, I I miss going out. Like I I would love to you know step out once in a while, go to Beirut, eat good food. <laughs> so. Yeah, so we've met yeah. Tashar before. For those who don't follow us on Instagram and Twitter, which you should, um, but you we, should. We met yeah, him you in, in Mumbai. We we talked. We, we had every intention of actually doing this interview in uh, India when we were with him, but we kind of just got caught up in talking with him at the house, and then we went to lunch and had some delicious food, and then we kind of and we had a previous engagement after that, so we never actually got to interview Tashar mm-hmm. like we wanted to. And uh, and and also, Tashar doesn't like to call this an interview. We're having a conversation right now. Uh, yes, <laughs> Tashar yeah. wants to make that perfectly I, clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have, we're having a conversation. Even if someone, you know, uh, even if someone tells me that, you know, hey, I'm your fan, I immediately in my head feel, you know, that's giving me way too much importance. Like, calm down, and you know, like call maybe like call yourself a supporter. Yeah, but you know, I'm very, I get very uh, nervous. Uh, I'm very nervous of words like. Uh, you know, fan or interview or, you know, anything to, uh, you know, anything on those lines, I, I get really like, oh, don't do that. I agree. But yeah, this is a conversation. Like, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good uh, disclaimer at the start. <laughs> um, so, uh, Rick, do you have a... Something you do want? I have you, a, haven't, you haven't You talked. stopped in mid-sentence. <laughs> you haven't talked, so I don't want to cut <laughs> you off. So... You can't cut me off if I'm not talking. But don't that's yeah. Yeah. no yeah. i've got a bunch of questions in okay. our conversation yeah. for tashar yeah, yeah go ahead <laughs> um please yeah so uh how i first of all i'd like to know how old were you when you first started doing anything musical and what was that what introduced you to music and at what age i actually uh oh this is strange i actually started uh, playing keyboard when i was uh i think i was four or five and I started it not because, you know, I, I was looking for it or I was seeking it. And I don't want to sound preachy here, but I started it because uh, we had a toy keyboard in our house and my sister used to play it. And I used to get jealous of her playing. I used to be like, oh my God, like, look at her, you know, what is she doing? She's doing a thing. So like, you know, I'm going to get to it and you know, I'm going to play better. So that's how I started. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's because of my sister, Tulika, you know, and she used to play uh, My Heart Goes On, like the, the Celine Dion song. And it, it was out of, you know, like uh, jealousy that I started playing keyboard. And obviously, I, I don't think I would have any other intent if I'm a four year old. So, I mean, that was like the purest emotion I had at that age. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I can't even, you know, like fake it and do anything else, you know, like, you know, it came to me or something. What I was for, I was eating mud outside my house. So, you know, like, what else am I supposed to say? 
Oh uh, man. That's how it started, and then I like kind of uh, figured out that you know like, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what song is this? Wait. Uh, okay. Sound like close. It, it yes. It's it's. It... Kinda. Yeah. Yeah, it's Paul McCartney when it, it was Paul McCartney and Wings. It was a song that Paul McCartney wrote. So, oh damn, okay. Do you have like um, this? Might be a dumb question <clears throat> coming from a non-musician, um, but that brought it up to me. Uh, some people have like a photographic memory. Do you have that with music? Like you can hear something once and you kind of no, know no, it? no, no, not at all. I think I think uh, with you know musicians, uh, I think our craft itself it's so romanticized. There are a lot of people, you know, try painting it in a light which is very, you know, like I don't know, surreal. But I think uh, people need to, you know, like normalize being musicians. So it's it's just a job, you know. And yeah. I think the more people normalize it, the more you know, close to reality they they will be. So I mean, you know, uh, I'll never I'll never have you know like a preachy answer to this thing. So I mean, I I've been uh, you know listening to music and you know trying to uh, kind of ape it on my instrument since I was a kid. and because of that you know i've developed this uh, i don't know sort of mechanism in my head where i can kind of understand notes and i can see them uh, on the keyboard uh, you know before i lay them down on my instrument like like a mental keyboard or whatever so that's how it works for me like the i mean there's nothing there's no photographic memory in all of that but there it's, are, it's only out of practice you know like there's there's nothing else to but it but there are musicians that can do that right Right? Yeah, but you don't really. Yeah, you don't really need a photographic memory because you're not, you're not remembering anything. You know, I mean, you're more, you you're kind of flowing with it. So it's you know, it's more to do about uh, coordinating multiple things at uh, the same second. It's it's not about you know like remembering stuff, and you know in a particular order. Gotcha. So yeah, a lot of people you know they have they have this insane ability where you know they can. Uh, you know they can play polyrhythms you know i mean very fluently and they can do i mean a lot of crazy stuff so it's it's more about simultaneously doing multiple things together in one go and you know like trying to understand things and you know deduce things it's not really about uh, you know like a set order where you can remember things so it's it's a very different like music has a very different perspective to it when it comes to you know being a prodigy or something and i'm i'm far away from being a prodigy also i, I mean i just play you know i've been Okay, no, no, no. I'm, I'm telling you, see, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'll send you a bunch of links of you know really good pianists, and you know they'll, and I'll, I'll send you links of you know six-year-olds who play better than me. So I mean, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm, more, I, uh, my, my personality uh, has got more to do with composition, mm-hmm. and uh, I would take you know like, uh, I mean, I, I, that's something that you know I, I, I keep close to my heart. But playing wise, yeah, I mean, I can play, but I mean, again, there are players who you know who really can play, like Jacob Collier. I asked you to check him out, right? Yeah, look what he does. Jacob Collier, Corey Hendy, Yuja Wong, mm. oh, man, crazy. You know, so when you're competing, who's the better musician? Like, you should check those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. If you had a keyboard right now, you would have killed me. I know, but it's okay. Nope. So <laughs> only because you don't have one. <laughs> I can't play any instrument, so that's a lie. <laughs> Not one. I'm just glad you're honest about it. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Rick. So did you when you were when you started playing out of the jealousy of your sister? <clears throat> um, <throat> how long? I would assume you did what a lot of kids do. Like when I started playing piano, it was I heard. themes to movies and i wanted to play those movie themes on mm-hmm. the piano so i learned rocky and star wars and uh mm-hmm. and that's how my son started playing piano he heard things mm-hmm. and he started to replicate them is that what happened mm-hmm. with you or did yes, you do yes. formal study or how did it how did it trans how did it grow from there no well, actually it started like that and uh, to be very honest for the first 14 years it was like that So I think uh, till I was about what no not 14 like for the first 10 years it was like that so I think uh, till I was uh, you know uh, my math is so bad I just realized till I was you know like 16 or 17 so call it 12 13 years till I was 16 17 uh, I was you know listening to things and you know I was trying to copy them on my instrument but then I kind of uh, got into music theory because it's very important when especially when you're communicating with other musicians Yeah. So, you know, I mean that just it just makes your life easy, you know. Like there are a lot of uh 
people you know who were uh, who weren't uh, you know hardcore uh, by the theory but you know they were great musicians like the beatles you know i mean that's i think i, I think that's the finest example but uh, yeah i mean i tried uh, aping tunes till i was uh, about 16 17 and then i got into theory only so that i could communicate you know i i could i could make my communication more easy and then when i went you know like deeper in it i found out that you know it can also aid my composition and you know it can also help me uh, get like a fresh perspective on things and understand them better you know decode mm. them decode them in a very uh, you know like structural way so all of that really helped mm. and why um I know you've probably told, said this a couple times, but why did you start the Indian Jam project? What made you want to start that? So I kind of uh, okay. I mean, there is a backstory to it. I think there's a conscious reason and there's a subconscious reason. The conscious one being, I have come across multiple uh, Indian classical uh, musicians and their instruments, and I think uh, they are absolutely extraordinary. in every way and it's not really out there you know and it's i mean you know there are there are brilliant sessions by you know like the stalwarts of our industry and uh, where uh, they would you know like go deep in a rag and they jam on it for like 60 minutes but then again like if i if you really have to find a connect for you know people who are my age people who are in the early 20s uh no one has the patience or the understanding to sit through that session and you know kind of listen to the entire thing and uh, I'm I'm telling you the conscious reason. So I was also a big fan of you know I'm I've always listened to scores. So even if I'm doing you know like normal listening or something, I would pick a score and you know I would listen to that entire album. I I won't go to like a uh, I don't know like a musician like a singer songwriter thing. So I thought that you know like uh, we should pick scores and you know because the playability is also a challenge. Like if you're playing something like Hedwig's theme from Harry Potter, you know it's it's tough to play. while you know experimenting with indian classical instruments so it will also be a challenge for indian classical instruments and you know we'll also get to have fun with the score like it's not it's not like a it's not like a four chord <laughs> thing you know like there are 1415 you know, like, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know what we're talking about <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry for <Corbin>. yeah, it <laughs> 1415 just makes me sad but uh, uh i mean no I, nothing against commercial music but i i don't like it when it's you know recurring and it's the same pattern with you, again brother. i think they should yeah, 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 yeah. more so yeah then i thought that you know like maybe we should try merging both the things and uh, i was really into making arrangements and you know like writing parts for other instruments and all of that so i thought you know like why not start something and subconsciously uh, i think i started uh, i don't know if this is the reason but this has happened a very good friend of mine jayan she invited me to her dad's concert uh, this was in thane and her dad was a sarod player and he was i think he's one of the most uh, uh, extraordinary musicians i've come across so we went to thane you know we thane is a, is a uh, area in bombay and uh, i i sat through the entire concert you know he was he was brilliant and uh, i i was just uh, i was just getting introduced to indian classical music So obviously you know like I started fanboying and I told her like you know can I go have a picture with him or something you know can I go to the green room and meet him I just want to talk to him So she told me yeah I mean obviously and then after the concert ended both of us went behind and I could hear you know like loud loud arguments coming out of the green room and uh, he was basically arguing with the organizers and it was in Marathi Marathi is not my first language so I couldn't understand or anything and uh, I I obviously sensed that you know something's happened and something's gone off so I told her like you know we can do this later. And I think after a month when she finally found the comfort to you know tell me what happened she told me that uh, basically the organizers were uh, not paying him any money and before the performance they basically told him that you know we'll pay you like a token amount and uh, then once the performance ended the token we they they uh, told him that we'll pay you a token and the token wasn't money it was you know like a shawl and a bouquet of flowers so and he was arguing with them that you know i know that you know you're giving me a lot of respect and, and you know you're giving me like a shawl and flowers and everything but that's not going to pay my bills yeah. you know like you give me something and you know he was asking for i don't know he was asking for 2 3 grand and that's not i mean considering how extraordinary he was you know i i just felt i i felt like shit and uh, sorry uh so you can cuss it's fine yeah I, okay okay nice i had nawaz call me a yeah, mother shot it's fine 
Oh yeah. <laughs> and he called. Actually, and forgot, was it I completely and, forgot. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Remember, he said when he first saw OSR, his first thought was, "What is this fuckery?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw the internet. Yeah. Why, uh, why yeah. Yeah. No. No. You don't need to apologize. Go on. Hold on. Second. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. Anyway. You. Yeah. So uh, then I, I just felt really bad, you know, and I, I mean, for someone as extraordinary as him to, you know, fight for two, three grand uh, after a concert. And uh, I mean, that's incredibly sad. So I thought that, you know, someone like I didn't think that, you know, I'm going to do it, but I thought someone should start painting uh, Indian classical instruments in a very different light. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Indian classical instruments need to come out because when I was listening to that concert, I could easily imagine that, you know, like from the notes that he was playing, I could imagine that, you know, he's he's very capable of playing Star Wars as well. And, you know, he's very capable of playing maybe something like uh, uh, Harry Potter or uh, Requiem for a Dream. And, you know, because the instrument is so versatile. So I think that is kind of like if I have to trace it back, like I've tried thinking about it a lot of times, but if I have to trace it back, I think this would be this would be the reason why uh, I started uh, the Indian Jam project. Again, like it's not I mean, I'm anyway, you know, like a little distant from the cover space. And, uh, you know, I would I would never take a guitar and, you know, go like Gulabi Akhe or something. I'm, I'm, I'm just not that person. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I think uh, I really wanted to recontextualize uh, how people think about Indian classical instruments, which was very, very important. Yeah. And that's why we are also taking, you know, scores and songs which are very iconic, you know. So we, we are not really, you know, going for like the four chord thing or something i mean we are we are, we are taking things which are either iconic or which are either like very, you know very challenging and we are trying to you know merge uh, and you know make and make like this indian classical soundscape so whatever we are releasing right now that entire soundscape is indian i mean there, there's drums in it and there's a piano in it but you know the, if you listen to the sound of that thing it's Indian classical and, and it's solely Indian classical instruments and man, they sound so good. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not even talking about, you know, that tr- I'm not even talking about my videos. I'm just talking about when I'm recording them in the studio, you know, half of the time I'm like, Jesus, man, help me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And you, you definitely yeah, actually well, helped us uh, get introduced to a lot of instruments uh, just through your videos yes. alone that we had never heard of mm-hmm. um, and, and all this stuff like that. And uh, I'll jump on your question right here, Rick, and then I'll get back to you. Sorry. Um, how do you go about mm-hmm. picking the, 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 the songs that you're going to cover basically with Indian music? Is it just your favorites or is it just uh, what's your process like that for picking a, the cover that you want to do next? I mean, um it's it's uh, mostly to do with how uh, I can imagine them in my head. So say like if we pick something like Harry Potter, yeah, I think I think I have like some sort of imagination and that kind of you know drives me through the entire process. So when we were doing Harry Potter, I was really excited about you know the Sarangi playing the this part, this part. So, you know, I was very like, oh my God, like, you know, that's going to sound uh, extraordinary and, you know, that's going to sound so good. So that kind of, you know, uh, drove me and I thought, uh, man, like uh, this would be something. And also sometimes a lot of these songs, uh, they align very nicely with a lot of uh, Indian classical ragas. So mm-hmm. I think uh, when we were uh, doing a cold please uh, fix you, uh, if you change uh, one note in the riff, but if you make this a minor, it becomes more evocative and it comes close to this rock called Nad Bhairav. And uh, like the plan was basically, I mean, I'll, I'm telling you what, what got me really excited. I thought that, you know, if we do this thing and if on the minor we can get, you know, like a, we can get a vocalist and a sarangi and a flute to do, you know, a lot of harkats and, you know, uh, harkats uh, uh, within Nad Bhairav, like it would be very, very interesting. So it's mostly that thing, you know, that hook, which, you know, gets me all pumped up and excited. And I'm like, man, like, you know, like, the, that's it's going to sound so nice and it's going to be, you know, such a good space to be in. And yeah. So, I mean, I just get happy and <laughs> like, you know, it has to like drive me through and then I'm like, OK, cool. That's awesome. Like that uh, better do, work. Do you also conceptualize your videos? Yeah. Oh, oh wow. I wanted to clarify. I, I do not. I do not. And I know videos are, you know, like uh, such a big part of, uh, you know, what we do. And it's mostly, you know, three guys who've helped me through and through. Uh, Ritwik, Ritwik Tyagi, uh, Tuhin Mukherjee and Shantanu uh, Naik. Uh, 
and all three of them you know they are dps so we mm. uh, we are essentially performing right i mean there isn't a story uh, so they they don't have to think like directors so whenever i'm working with them i i kind of you know let them lose and you know i tell them that you know like you go and you do whatever you want you know i'm not even going to get into the video process and they yell at me if i you know try you know like telling them oh okay we do this they like shut up you know like this is not your zone like stay out of it dps do yeah. not like being and, told uh, what to do <laughs> yes at all yes yes and uh, trust me they they work they work very well if they you know like not instructed or you know if they yep. not if you're not putting a mold on their head and you're telling them this is how you have to like most i mean artists. i only uh, yeah. remind them of the time and i i only check the scheduling and all uh and i check the overall management of the shoot but you know i'm never telling them what to shoot and how to shoot and uh yeah so i mean video is uh, all them actually. do you have a I mean, do you I have not, never really not a favorite song but do you have a favorite video that you've done yeah i think we really did a very good job with believer mm mm-hmm. uh because we had very good cameras with us we had two units like tohin and ritwik both of them were shooting it and uh, they they did a phenomenal phenomenal job you know i mean i um, i mean obviously when it's happening you know you can't check how it looks and you can only look in on that small monitor or something but uh, then when in the post they you know like did their thing and i don't know color, they colored it and everything the entire di process and after that when i looked at them i'm like damn man like what did you all do and how did how, how did you pull this off mm. so yeah, that video was actually and we did the entire video in one day which was also something really because uh, i mean yeah yeah so that's why we had two units and you know we were, show, were shooting mm-hmm. throughout this uh, area called uh, the kolivara fort and uh, yeah i mean i think uh, video wise you know that and also requiem i also like requiem a lot because of how it's edited that's the siri one you know right? so i mean yeah that's yeah, the siri yeah now one was great so, i love that one yeah because ritwik he just like went ham Are you with the edit Rithic? like he Rithwick, Rithwick. Oh, I thought you were saying Rithwick, like you Rithwick. know Rithwick. <laughs> Rithwick Roth- yeah, Roshan. Oh, he's my, Rithwick. he's my DP. Uh- <laughs> he's my editor. Yes. Yeah. I wish, man. I wish. <laughs> uh, my favorite yeah, is so probably I mean, uh, hmm. just because I have an emotional attachment to it already. Is Dark Knight. That was probably my favorite video mm. of yours, just because mm. of how mm. how it was done, where they added the Joker's voice into that certain part when they panned, and then a lot mm. of the pans mm. were extremely cinematic and beautiful. I, that yeah. was that was one of my favorite, yeah. That was one of my favorite ones that, that's, that you've done. Yeah, that's that's again uh, that's again Ritwik and all the you know there there are a lot of Easter eggs in the in that video. Yep. So you know, the, yes, uh, so that's all Shantanu. So Shantanu is also like a great VFX guy. So these guys, you know, like they're just like very uh, brainy when it comes to their own craft. So I'm I'm just uh, you know happy that they're all my friends. It's yeah. so funny we've gotten drunk and we've done like horrible stuff together, but also we work together. <laughs> and, you know, like, well, that tends to turn into a good partnership. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drinking is always the you know, correct when... answer. <laughs> Yeah. Corman and I Imagine spent like years can... doing that together before we so started. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So I mean um yeah, it's actually good, you know. It's a good space to be in when you're working with your friends. Yeah. It's it's nice. I would love for one day when we can actually travel again uh and and go hmm. out of our houses um to collaborate with in you on, on one of our videos. That'd be phenomenal. I would love that. Hmm. Yeah actually like we should we should actually you know uh, do one of your vid- uh, videos in a very cinematic style heck yeah like you know we, yeah like you know and you know in like a very larger than life well, cinematic yeah, style we, we, we should like make both try, of you sit on a mountain or something yeah. we usually try to um do our celebration videos every 100,000 we won't be able to right now yes. because dig it's not like, obviously we can't go out uh in the last one we yeah, were in it's india not, it's not the, um but those are the ones that we can do a lot of stuff on in terms of being very cinematic and mm. Rick it composes the music and writes it uh and then I come Yeah, up, it's it's I come up with the almost the video process very well done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't, yeah, they're, they're so they're, they're so much fun to watch and you know you've got you've got so much uh, uh Indian trivia in it. Yeah. Like so, <laughs> so much of it and I'm like damn man I mean certain in ones terms of writing and you know like arranging recording yeah. I love it I love it all the all the music is done by Rick obviously because I would yeah. be no help in that yeah. uh 
I, I sometimes throw a little uh, word or two here in my rap part, but that's about the only uh, input I have in the uh, lyrics or the music part. Other than that, I'm just the DP. That's, that's your contribution. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but no. And that, then, then after that, every video has been conceptualized and directed and filmed and edited by Corp. That's much easier, though. Than okay, yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that sounds about... I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. The yeah. entire concept, you know, I, yeah. I put the song together. And, yeah. but, and even when I put the song together, there was only one song. That was the very first song that we did, that I did, that we... we um, uh, I showed him the song and just hoped he liked it. The rest of the time it was collaborative and I gave him an idea of where we were going with yeah. the song. Um, when you're writing, uh, do you have a program that you put it into that puts it onto the sheet music for you? Or do you like to do old school writing where you're actually manually putting stuff? Like, are you sitting at the keyboard most of the time or does it just come to you? You said a moment ago, you'll see the notes. Will you just sometimes take you know, the sheet music down and just writing out the yeah. notes? Actually, uh, when it uh, comes to uh, Indian classical musicians, like you don't really work with sheets necessarily. I mean, uh, most of the people around me, they don't work with sheets. You you know, you directly write the sargam on a mm. piece of paper. So, I mean, it doesn't... Uh, the only time, you know, I've worked with sheets is when I was working on my original uh, with the Budapest, Budapest uh, Symphonic Orchestra. And, uh, you know, that's when, you know, when you're writing parts for uh, first violin, second violins, and, you know, like... Cherry right. and all of that. I mean, then you have to work when I, I had a great friend of mine, Samar, and you know, like he helped me out with all of that. Uh, so, yeah, that's when you actually sit down to kind of uh, write on sheets and you know, because then it's 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 like a big live performance together. But mostly when we're recording, like, you know, I'd, I'd either like uh, sing it out to them or, you know, I always have a keyboard with me, so uh, I'll play it out to them. Uh, and sometimes, you know, their own. Uh, uh, feedbacks and you know they, they they do things on their own and obviously like I'm also simultaneously giving them uh, complete freedom to work on their instrument right and uh, yeah it's 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 uh, usually a mix of both like I I lock like ninety percent eighty to ninety percent of the arrangement but then uh, there's always you know that little buffer for you know like whatever you want to add in it or something so cool. I got yeah. I got a technical question I want to ask you about. Yes writing for different instruments yeah so i know that like if you're working with the an, an orchestra mm -hmm. and you're doing a western modality and you're using say a standard orchestral arrangement right okay. you're gonna have to you're gonna have to transpose things for the wind instruments depending upon which instrument is going to be used in mm -hmm. indian instrumentation are there mm -hmm. indian instruments that you have to do that too because what you've written on the keyboard actually needs to be transposed for whatever that instrument is their their key is for that instrument so ideally an easier way out is to you know kind of uh, pick a key which uh, is more uh, comfortable for indian classical instruments so say if you're talking about uh, a sarod and we use the sarod in uh, the yellow scientist uh, you 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 can't tell a sarod player that you know we have to play this on g or you know he'll have to figure it out but it's way easier if it's on c c sharp or d you know, max like D sharp. D sharp is also, you know, like a little too much, but a sarod ideally, you know, like revolves around C, C sharp, D. And mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, and also like, uh, like say, flute is, you know, like very versatile like that. Uh, I mean, um, uh, say if I'm writing a part for flute, like, you know, that interstellar, uh, this, uh, the part on top of this. Wow, it's not playing anymore. One second. So. <laughs> So there's a melody which runs on top of this. So, you know, uh, when I was writing that, you know, I kind of kept in mind that, you know, how he would bend the note and, you know, how mm -hmm. he would, uh, uh, I don't know, like what, actually, I'll give you a better example. Uh, talk about a sitar. So, you know, when you're, when, when you're writing parts for sitar, you can't, you can't, you have to keep the fret length in mind. And, you know, you can't write parts uh, for a sitar like, you know, it's a guitar. And you know, because he really has to go like that if he's uh, sitting down. So you really need to know the instrument. And obviously, like I, I, I wasn't um them that yeah, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm learning something. And you know, next time, you know, we'll keep it a little more. Uh, I don't know, like close. And yeah, so I mean, every instrument works differently. Um, but yeah, you you really need to you know like record the instrument once. You know, talk to the musician. The musicians are you know always like super supportive, friendly. 
so they help you out uh, with it as well. And it's, it's not distracting at all that Corbin's. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, they uh, they're they're doing construction, oh. and I didn't want the noise. Could y'all hear any of that? Oh, the cons- no. no? Really. Okay, no. well, they were being real loud. Okay, sorry, but yeah, I heard you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, what <laughs> is the uh, biggest difference from Western to Indian music that you would say? Hmm. I think. Uh, I think Western's more about, yeah, wait, let me, allow me to be a little preachy. Okay. I think if I have to, you know, describe it within a space, I think Western's more horizontal for me, while, uh, you know, Indian's more vertical. So, you know, Western's more about uh, uh, color and, you know, it's more about, I'm talking about Western classical, like it's more about color and it's it's more about dynamics and, you know, how it flows and it can be everywhere. Indian classical is more about depth, definitely, because, you know, like you always have, you know, one note where the entire things, you know, revolving around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Indian classical is more about uh, exploring depth and uh, Western classical is more about, you know, like it being out there and, you know, with the dynamics and variations and it's to do with the instruments. Indian classical is more about it being meditative. And you know, it's it's more about you know it taking you to like a very uh, I don't know. It's like uh, limiting yourself, but you've done that on purpose. So it's don't don't see it like you know you're trapped in a prison. See it like you're meditating in a cave. Like you know you've made that choice that I'm gonna go you know like deep in this mode. <laughs> and Western right. classical is like very. Rick you know. often says, "What do you say, Rick, about that in the universe? What is uh, what's Indian music?" Like it's it's about the, Indian the music. The sounds of the what do you say? Well, that I there there is a musicality that can be measured and heard in the universe, and I often talk about how the harmonic series in music resonates with some of the vibrations that we know exist in the universe that have mm. musical mathematical notation. And mm. something something you just said, Tashar, that I feel this way about. Um, the, the constraint actually gives you an opportunity to be creative in a way that most people wouldn't think of it at face value. So, like, for mm-hmm. example, one of my favorite my favorite way to write something poetic, just to write poetry, is mm-hmm. to constrain myself into iambic mm-hmm. pentameter. Mm-hmm. And I, I found that the constraint of iambic pentameter, not necessarily 14 stanzas, but at least the 10 beats per line, forces me by reason of the restriction to be creative in a way that i couldn't be otherwise and it releases something of the poetic in me and Mm. i that same thing happens for me and the the, you gave a great description of Mm. of the comparison of western and indian which now leads to this question for me so for example in a jazz composition they'll have stuff that's been written and then they'll get mm. to a certain measure, and the instrument, mm. the, the guys in the band will know, okay, we've got 25 measures right now of just mm. improv, so just count the measures and go, and then when we're done, we'll count you back in and we'll pick up where we went off. Does that yeah, happen yeah. In, in classical music, in, in Indian music? Because it feels like it sure does. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, especially if you're uh, talking about a tabla. I mean, I'm not very well aware of, you know, how tablas work. Um, I know the basics of it. But... Uh, Tabla players, you know, like they're working with some uh, very, you know, like complex mechanisms in their head, heads, you know, like while they are playing and while they're performing. So say uh, they, yeah, always like at the back of their heads, you know, they always have uh, the count of the measures and, you know, like when the, when is it finally ending, you know, they've mm-hmm. all the bars like sorted in their heads. And even, you know, there's a, there's a thing uh, in, uh, in, in classical uh, rhythm school of thought called it the high. And say it, it's it's like a uh, how do you explain? It? It's like a, the same. Uh, it's the same count. Oh, okay, one second. Should I just look this up? The high is basically if you're ending uh, uh, a rhythm, or you know, if you're ending like a, a junction of a composition, you take three cycles of the same measure and you end it on the downbeat. Mm. So sometimes you know the highs are uh, very short. But uh, I, I wish I wish I had a tabla player in me right now. Sometimes the tehais are very short. But say uh, if they started counting the first cycle of the tehai, like you know, I don't know, 
like uh, 11 bars before uh, the thing is ending or you know 11 bars before the down beat so they have to count it accordingly where they have to split all of the 11 bars into three parts and they have to make sense out of it right so you can't yeah you can't do that sort of math uh, unless you have the bars running inside your head constantly right you know so this is this is just a very like uh, I'm, I'm sorry if i've offended any tabla players but this is just a very uh, basic version of you know like what they think and you know how their uh, head works but uh, yeah i mean you for me like the first thing that you know when i started learning about the eyes the first thing i understood was that you know you have to you have to have like you know a basic count of the bars at the back of your head while this entire you know piece is running because it it, it won't work otherwise you know because Can, you get lost just, yeah you're not just ending on the downbeat you're doing like three equal cycles before the downbeat so when the first ends there might be a high possibility that you know you sound completely off and you know you're you're not very well juxtaposed to the uh, rhythm that's already running but then you have to keep going and you know you have to keep that count corbin's just like why am i here <laughs> i'm just i'm just letting you two talk i don't <laughs> Which, yeah, which, yeah, but it's usually how I, I am during music reviews. Yeah. Okay, so this is a weird. This may seem like a weird transition, and then I'll switch over and let Corbin ask the question. <laughs> the, okay, so you're, are you very familiar with the music of the band Rush? Not, not, not too familiar, actually. Okay, I am. Never mind. Them, yeah. Yeah, I think. Tashar, if you ever get a chance, you might want to listen. You might want to listen to some of the music from the band Rush. Okay. Because one of the things that differentiates them from other bands from the 70s is yeah. they, like Chicago, had a really high musical IQ, and they okay. would constantly change rhythms. Mm. Like, they'd be in something that's 4-4, four, four, and then they'd switch mm. it to 7-8. Mm. Oh, wow. And then, okay. they'd go, then they'd go back to 4-4. Four, four, and people mm. listening just are like, wow, this is really cool. But mm. if you know music, you're, like, you're, you're mm. counting with them and going, dang, these guys, they're... Their rhythm changes uh, and their drummer. I I would yeah. love your impression of of yeah. them. Anyway, <laughs> they got a lot of iconic songs no, that you get Indianized. That's for sure. Really do. No, no. I would love to see. So check out their song Tom Sawyer. <laughs> okay, can you spell it for me? T O M. Sawyer. Yeah. If you if if Indian Jam Project. Oh, so good. Took Tom Sawyer. Yes. Ooh, baby. <laughs> yeah, so good. Uh, so, um, well, uh, I'm checking them out. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, you gotta rush. If, have you ever seen the uh, the the movie I Love You, Man? Uh, the the movie's called I Love You, Man. Yeah, with uh, with the um. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I can't think of their names right now. Uh, so, well, yeah, I thought you were just expressing, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm just um, I'm expressing via music, via my voice. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we'll, I want to ask you some rapid fire questions because we do that in every interview. It's kind of oh, a damn. thing now. Uh, this is like a this is like a legit coffee with Corbin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coffee with Corbin. Um, first question: coffee or chai? Chai. Uh, do you like coffee at all, though? Yeah, I do. Okay. But like chai, chai any day. I don't know if you have any of these in front of you, Rick. I'm basically just asking the ones I asked Nawaz. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah. Favorite, <laughs> favorite, fire away, fire away. Favorite Hollywood actor? Okay. Damn. Uh, <laughs> Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Really? Matt Damon. Interesting. Yeah. Favorite Matt Damon movie? Really like what was it? Interstellar. I mean, I I know he was in the lead role in Interstellar, but I I really really like. No, no. Once again, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, it's a movie. Good Goodwill Hunting. Is Goodwill in, Hunting. Is Interstellar yeah. your favorite Hollywood film? One of my favorites for sure. I mean, what what a great movie. Yeah, agreed. What a great movie. Favorite Indian film. Yeah. Okay. The, it could be any. Gangs of Wasipur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a great. Gangs of Wasipur is just a great film. It is. Like, it's, it's just a great. It's a very well made, you know, like it's. Agreed. A fan. Um, yeah. People study it, you know. So, I mean, yeah, it is. It here's is a question. 
Can anyone, and it might be more than a rapid fire, can anyone be a musician? Hmm. Uh, yes. You yes, so? obviously. Huh? I mean, uh, in their own capacity. Let's let's answer it like that. Gotcha. I mean, so, you know, you don't have to uh, kind of go overboard and be, you know, sad if you're not able to play as well as, you know, someone who you idolize. But in your in their own capacity, you know, a lot of people can be musicians. And it's very important for them to understand that a lot of great songs are very simple. So, you know, you don't don't reject simplicity. You know, I mean, it's 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 a very nice thing. So even if you know, like, uh, even if you know only how to play like seven or eight chords, it, it still means that you can make a great song. You don't need to know, you know, like all the charts at the back of your head. What's your favorite thing about making music? Okay, about making music, I'll take composition. Like when you're really feeling the composition, it's a surreal experience. So, you know, it, like it literally, you know, like, I don't know, like I, whenever I work with my instrument, you know, it literally comes on my body and on my mind and, you know, I start feeling it. So, I'm, I'm, and I've never felt like that with anything else. So it really hits me in a way, you know, I almost feel like I'm doing a drug or something. So, I mean, it's mm. it's nice. I mean, you know, not that I've tried drugs, damn. <laughs> but, like, but I mean, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that, you know, like going through that, you know, like surreal experience, like that's what must be like. What's your least favorite thing about making music? uh coordination and you know like get like say if you're jamming so you know like calling everyone and making sure everyone's on time you know the management part of it mm. i mean yeah that's that's something that i don't dig i mean i wish everyone could you know just magically pop up at one place or magically meet and you know like just start so, i mean the setting up bit of it like yeah do you prefer I don't know if this would actually make any sense. Do you prefer doing the covers or making originals? Making originals. Yeah, I obviously. figured. I figured that's. But what then we again, would say. like yeah. I'm also, yeah, I'm. I'm very. I don't know. I I get very scared. Like you know, I mean, not not because you know, like I haven't made a lot of them. Like I've made seventeen of them actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, I I before releasing it, I just really want to be sure that you know it's the perfect thing. And uh, then uh, when uh, I think I was starting Indian Jam project, I was expecting this to be, you know, like a minor, you know, blog sort of a space where people come to, you know, chill, like a cafe sort of a zone where people listen to. And then this also blew up a little. So then while I was handling it, you know, I, I was also handling my insecurities about, you know, making my compositions, you know, downright perfect. Mm. But now, you know, now I'm really like getting over that and uh, I'm working on a lot more. So internally, like I'm happy now. And uh, who's your f favorite uh, Indian actor? I just want to Indian know. actor. Damn. I just want to know. You'd be okay. I don't think you'd be surprised. Pankaj Tripathi. Which one? Who's he? Pankaj Tripathi. He was in Gangs of Wasseypur. Uh, Hold on. I'm. I must I'll, be... I'll send you. I'll send you. I'll send you some links. How do you spell his name? Yeah. And. Uh, P A N K A J K T R I P A T H I. Oh, Tripathi. Oh, Tripathi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. Oh, you just say it differently. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You oh, say it Chris. right. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> yeah. say it. You say it correctly. That makes sense. We love we constantly. Yeah. We love him. Love him. Yeah. We've seen him. In I mean, whenever, whenever you uh, like, if you're asking me like favorite actor, I my head automatically associates you know actors being from you know like a theater like space or something so you know i'm i think if you ask me like who's your favorite bollywood superstar versus who is your favorite actor these two are different questions gotcha you know in my head yeah. absolutely they they play in especially it's very different in india than it is in in america the superstar is a completely mm. different thing then uh yeah. and, and nawaz even explained it he was like he's actually he's glad he's not yeah. in that category because they have to play yeah. a hero and he's like i can play so yeah. many different things and so it's 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 very interesting yeah. the way that it is different in in, in the indie especially bollywood in comparison to uh, yeah. uh hollywood uh, yeah, he's he, he's so brilliant in his own space so you know i would i would be actually like i don't know how i, I would not know how to deal with uh, you know nawaz uh, I don't know, like dancing and you know, like frolicking around or something. I mean, that's just that's just not him, you know. Like, uh, it's it's he's 
he's more of you know like what you what he called you like he's more in that space always i know not, not just that. like i think he's he i think he's very versatile and he can be like you know anything that he you know decides to be yeah but what'd you say right i love seeing nawaz in a big musical number well i think he was in <laughs> yeah. i think it happened this past year in uh, like a some weird comedy film that we saw him in, where he was doing that. Yeah, there was a comedy. Yeah, I like I'd like to see him in a full blown, massive Bollywood musical number, like an SRK thing or a riffic mm. thing, and he is the main dude in the music number. I would love that. Yeah, that'd be great. Mm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, true, true, true. Rick, if there's a question yeah, that you actually. wanted to ask, and uh, I don't want to make uh, cut you off, if there's a question that you wanted that you, you didn't get to. No, no, no. Should well, I get like I, background music I, to what you think? Sorry. Yeah. Well, in a second you will. So here's a quick question. It's mm-hmm. easy to answer, and then okay. I just have a statement. So the first question is: How many instruments yeah. do you play? Uh, I mean, I think I play like. Um, I'm not counting, by the way. Like I only know one instrument properly. That too, like I think I'm, you know, like not not too good at it. Yeah, but, but now you can, can take... anything. Anything like, for example, I'm not a drummer, but I can sit at a drum kit and play the drums. But I would never think to be in a band and play drums so anything you can play oh okay so like that like four or five okay mm-hmm. four or five that's yeah. more than i can play so <laughs> i can't play a one okay. instrument <laughs> that was that was hard to guess but now guess. You, okay so now you can really now you can pl- yeah. play some play some nice little background music right now just oh, something okay. really really nice because i'm gonna i'm gonna let you we've already kind of alluded to it but you um what you have wanted to do with indian jam project in bringing to specifically i know you've said people of your generation but Mm. it is much broader than that definitively our introduction to indian jam project is exactly what you've wanted it to be so i think you should feel encouraged by the fact that our introduction to corbin's love in the background music uh that that you are doing exactly what you set out to do with an Indian Jam project. And that you have taken things that we love and we are uh, uh, aware of and are palatable, like the, the Dark Knight theme and like the song from Titanic and all of these covers that you've done. And you have made them, you have given them the Indian texture and flavor and flair and incorporated instruments and vocalizations and things that have been lost in the wayside. And I just, I, I want you to know exactly what you've set out to do. I hope you feel encouraged by the response you've gotten from Stupid Babies and the response you've gotten from people who just know you as Indian Jam Project and Tashar. And that, that you, we, we feel you are making a massively important contribution to the world of music and the world of artistry. Uh, and we there's nobody in music for, forget indian there's nobody in music that we believe in support and think is making contributions to the world of music more than you man i mean truly oh um that's it's very <laughs> it's a very heavy statement for me to take. <laughs> uh, but <clears throat> there you go <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> that uh, yeah yeah I don't know wow man like that's a that's a lot to take actually I mean I'm glad you know I'm glad uh, um, uh, we were able to you know recontextualize uh, Indian classical instruments in a new light I believe there's this sort of exceptional versatility to Indian classical instruments they're very moldable you know very malleable in in the in the best way you know in the most uh, positive way. And uh, <clears throat> I'm glad that, you know, we are just in this space, we are getting to explore Indian classical instruments. And you have no idea how big a contribution you've made to, you know, uh, help people discover us because half of the comments are, you know, like, oh, we, we are the OSR family. And, you know, I, mm. first things first, like your fans, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're just, they're so supportive and, you know, they're, they're so, uh, I don't know, they're just so like positive and supportive, you know, like, they're like you guys, you know, like talking, like if I get into a conversation with them, you know, it just Im- immediately puts me in a good mood. And I'm like, man, like, you know, he's, uh, this person's uh, supporting me, like, you know, he's like, he's like my brother or something. I mean, that that, that makes me feel uh, very nice. And then again, like, you know, um, just your fans and, you know, just you guys, you've, you've really helped us, you know, like uh, put our work out at a lot of places where I think no one would have, uh, you know, heard of Indian Jam Project. And, you know, you guys, 
you guys did actually you know such a big favor to us by kind of uh, not just reacting to it but also you know the insights you give and uh, uh, i'm i'm also you know so glad Rick, that you're a musician yourself and uh, you know you you're able to understand coven <laughs> with the straight face no no and and coven as well you know like it has to be it has to be the two of you together and you know Absolutely. the insights you given and you know like whatever you put on the table like it's just uh, yeah i mean it overwhelms us every single time and you know i like like uh, you just reacted to hotel california and you know i could just see like you guys jamming to it mm-hmm. that just made me happy you know like it made my day and uh, you may you very, may uh, you make our day man yes yeah, so, i mean um I'm, i'm yeah i'm glad you know this is like a symbiotic process and i'm <laughs> very very happy well th- uh, thank yeah. you so much I mean, for thank you thank you for that Thank you for sitting down with us and thank you for making your music, man. You know we love you. Uh and uh I can't wait to sit down and have uh a lunch with you, whether it's here oh, man. In, in Los yeah. Angeles or yes. in uh, ba- back in India. Again. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We're going to do that. We're going to do that real soon. Like let this I don't know how long this is going to go on for, but I I hope, you know, like in another 2-3 months, you know, like maybe one of us could come down and Yeah, yeah. we'd we'd meet for lunch. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. We well, talk more. Well, yeah, that was so much fun. I love you, man. Love yeah, you, Chishar. Yeah, take care, guys. It was take care, really man. nice talking to you.